Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode. Look how happy he is. L look how much energy he's. Look at him. Look, look at that guy. How has he got so? He doesn't. He doesn't have a clue. He does not have a clue what he is about to get in for. Sixty-eight episodes. Sixty-eight episodes. <laughs> That's how long it took for Arsenal to announce th their first signing. L listen to him. Episode of our Raw Reaction series, our show in which we react to the latest Arsenal news. Get your thoughts and feelings. And this, this is the first of a new kind of series that I'm going to try and commit to every single day to give you guys the latest Arsenal transfer insight. Obviously, we'll. What a moron. <laughs> what, what a moron he was. Why did he do that? Why did why did he? I'm just, this is so patronising to myself, talking about myself in the third person. Why did he think that was a good idea? Why did I think this is a good idea? Oh, dear me. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show, uh, for another episode of our Raw Reaction series where we react to the latest Arsenal news, matches, Transfer discussion, everything, and Arsenal have signed a player. It's happened, guys. It's happened. You can hear my voice almost breaking at the exhaustion that this club has put me through. Arsenal have signed Nuno Tavares, or actually, I've been saying Nuno Tavares for so long. It's not even his name. I said his name correctly for so long. It's, it's Nuno Tavares, and I said that. In the tactical breakdown, how many times did I say Nuno Tavaj for all people in the chat box to go, no, you're pronouncing it wrong. You're not pronouncing it right, Tom. Why, why aren't you learning how to pronounce this correctly? It's Nuno Tavaj. Like I said it was. He says it himself. Oh, the frustration, the anger, all built up to today's show. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for tuning in. Please, please, I beg, I beg, please drop a like on the video just to show your appreciation for 68 episodes before our first signing was made. Uh, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with those notifications turned on. Let's let's hear what the man has got to say because, and of course, what Arteta's got to say uh, about him as well. I'm sure you've read through some of these already. But let's see what the club have said. Uh, Technical Director Edu says, Nuno is a talented young player who's wanted by a number of clubs across Europe. He will provide strong backup in the left-back position. We look forward to him growing and developing with us and becoming an important member of the first team squad. Arteta has said we welcome Nuno to the club. He is young uh, with great promise and who has developed well with Benfica in recent seasons and has also shown his quality by being part of the Portugal under 21s. Nuno arrival will be uh, or rather will give the squad extra strength and options in defence particularly with his energy on the left side of the pitch. We look forward to Nuno's arrival, his integration into the Arsenal family and playing in front of our fantastic supporters. Now, he has also uh, done an interview as well. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but interestingly, hearing kind of them talk about his strength, because that is part of his game that he certainly has got going for him. He's the fact that he's like this tall left back. He's got uh, kind of this bodily strength about him that means he can really hold off players quite well, which means a transition into the Premier League will hopefully be a lot better um, and a lot easier for him. So that's certainly something going for him. And his speed is something that he talks about. Let's hear what he has to say about uh, his style. If I just scroll down to the bottom straight away, he says, how would you describe your style of playing? What will the Arsenal fans see from you? And he says, I'm fast. I'm good at shooting with my right foot. Obviously, he's left-footed, uh, usually, uh, which he says. He says, I can dribble, improvising. That's my qualities, my technique. I have more qualities and will find more in this club he is looking to develop to improve and he certainly does need to improve that is for sure but in terms of like his first uh, interview he says well they say welcome to Arsenal can you tell us your emotions about signing for the club and he says thank you I'm so excited because it is a big club for me as a young guy it is a pleasure to be here it's good for my career and to begin at Arsenal is a big club I'm very happy um, when asked about when he was first uh, kind of heard about uh, Arsenal's interest he says when I finished the season, my agent told me that Arsenal were interested in me. The first instance was very happy. And after this, I dreamed about it and spoke about it with my mum. I was so excited to be here. And now I'm here. I'm so happy. So interesting. We heard about this deal literally about, what, two weeks, just over two weeks ago. 
But it seems like this was certainly one that was in the pipeline for a lot longer and stayed pretty much under the radar, which is a good thing. Like It's a really good thing because it means that you see all these links to your Ruben Neves, your Awas, your Madisons, your whoever, right? And this link popped up out of absolutely nowhere for us, even though it had been going on behind the scenes for quite a while. So that is a really good thing for us and for me in the market in particular, because I like Arsenal doing things as much as possible behind the scenes. Even as a content creator that loves to feed off news and talk to you guys about news, I love when Arsenal can announce things like they did with Matt Ryan completely out of the blue, because it gives me hope that some things may just pop up. And uh, and surprise us. Uh, did the move move? Uh, did they move? Uh, sorry, did the move happen quickly? They ask him. He says no. It was not a quick process, and to us it seemed quick, but it wasn't. There were more things about the contract, and with me, things between the clubs of Arsenal and Benfica. It was not quick. It took a long time, and the negotiations were, were not quick. And I think for me, that's something uh, that tells us about kind of the Lokonga situation, the Ben White situation. Arsenal aren't doing these deals quickly, even for the ones like Tavaj, who is like a cheaper option for Arsenal and a backup option. Arsenal are trying to get the best deals possible. Now, we always talk about Arsenal being penny pinchers and not spending enough and not being kind of proactive enough to go and get deals done. But actually, I'm looking at this from a more positive, optimistic perspective. <laughs> surprise, surprise, I'm looking at it optimistically. But the point is, is that I'm looking at it from the perspective of going, Arsenal are trying to, you know, get the best possible deals for the club this summer, both with outs and ins and not getting themselves mugged off in terms of deals. We've overpaid for players in the past that we shouldn't have done. And we have undersold players in the past that we should have gotten more from. And I'm hoping that this is a bit of an insight, a bit of a, a positive sign for me um, for it. Am I reading too quickly? <laughs> I'm so sorry, chat box. This is why uh, this is why I always make those mistakes because I'm just like rah, 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 as fast as possible. Um, what have Edu and Mikel? Let's slow this down. Edu and Mikel said about what they want from you this season. He says Mikel and Edu helped me so much. They speak with me every time and call me and I feel people want me here. I like that because I need this power and I'm so grateful for this. When asked what is it about Arsenal that you like uh, that brought you here, it's because you have a good project, he says. <laughs> Trust the project. <laughs> it's a new thing. Young people, uh, it's good for me and we learn together because we can understand together and we can have an evolution together with the young players. It's the same. It's a good project with young guys and we understand each other. Now, this is great. Um, and I'm annoyed that they tweaked this. Um, <laughs> they tweaked the transcript of what he actually said in the video that you've probably all seen and when he says about kind of asking about players at the club he says in the present I like and then they replace what he says with Emil Smith Rowe now he says and I'm sure that you've said this he says I like in the present I like the Smith now if that isn't the best I've been looking and you guys have been watching the show for a long time Emil Smith Rowe is obviously a bit of a mouthful at times, that Ainsley Maitland Niles is always a bit of a mouthful, and we always used to just paraphrase it into just calling him Mainsley. And we've been looking for kind of a, a nickname for Emil Smith Rowe, and we've been saying ESR and stuff like that. But even then, it's three syllables, um, which is just far too many. I mean, who would have three syllables? That's, that's why I've named Tom. It's just one syllable. That's all you want. That's all you need. And we have been looking for a nickname for Smith Rowe for so long, and we have it. We have the nickname. The Smith is what he's going to be called from now on, and I love it. I, I'm, that is, that, that's going to be an emoji. That is certainly for the members. I'm going to get on that straight away to my emoji guy. Members, you will have a The Smith emoji, actually. I will wait till he signs his new deal <laughs> because you know what will happen. I'll tempt fate, get an emoji done for you guys to use in the chat box, and then he'll leave. <laughs> that is, that's what will happen. It's what happens with everyone. I make a Xhaka emoji, he leaves. I make a Maitland Knowles emoji, he wants to leave. I make a Thomas Partey emoji, he gets injured. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's what happens. So I will wait. I'm not going to tempt fate this time. I am going to wait for him to sign the new deal, because he will sign the new deal. I am very confident of that happening. But I won't be confident if I make the emoji first. So... We will wait for him to sign the new deal. And as he signs the new deal, we will release the emoji for Emil Smith Rowe. Okay, you have uh, you have my word on that one. And I will get to work on getting that made from my emoji guy. Can you imagine that? We've got to 25,000 subs nearly. And this is what happens when you get to 25,000 subs. You get an emoji guy. It just happens. You know, they, just, they just pop up. It's like uh, in like a video game when you unlock certain perks. 
when you get to near 25,000 subs, you get an emoji guy. That's just part of it. <laughs> anyway, we're, well, obviously, this is the Raw Reaction Show, and the most thing about the show is we get your thoughts, your feelings uh, in the chat box. So let's go through and get as many of your thoughts about Nuno Tavaj uh, signing for Arsenal as much as possible. Let's scroll up to the top and see what you guys have been saying about Nuno Tavaj. Uh, if you join us late, go and watch the intro to the show. <laughs> because <laughs> it was just a killer going back and watching what I was like at the start of this series uh, before 68 episodes, and then we finally make our first signing. So there you go. Um, let's go. Yeah, so it's Nuno. Uh, I mean, he he pronounces it very quickly. It's like Nun Tavaj. Nun, Nun Tavaj? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get used to saying it. Um, <laughs> Tom Savol says, you did it for us idiots. Wildly entertaining and more importantly, informative, even if you look at a little more tired than you did at the start. Thanks. I do look a little bit more tired than I did at the start. It was 68 episodes and we've still got at least another 50 odd to go. So uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Um, Nick says, wanted by a number of clubs and chooses Arsenal. Really, I do? Sorry, but I can't help but being cynical. I mean, he was wanted by apparently Napoli. Lazio were also interested in him and he's chosen Arsenal. So there you go. So he says maybe he's more of a winger than a defender. Um, so there's clearly kind of this thing about the fact that Tini is very much going to be the starter for us. He's very much going to be uh, our number one choice. And maybe there is... Uh, you remember when we used to have um, Kieran Gibbs and Monreal? We used to start with Monreal and then Wenger would bring on Gibbs at like the end of games to play in front of him because he's got the defensive ability to play in the final third. Maybe that's what we'll see with Nuno Tavaj. We might see him being brought on with Tierney already on the pitch to kind of play ahead of him as like a last 10, 15 minutes kind of positional change to, to bring someone who's giving you more cover on that side. I feel like that's something tactically that we'll do until Tierney gets injured and then Tavaj plays just out and out at left back. So we'll wait and see. Uh, Ronald says, Tavaj doesn't give, doesn't look like he will give uh, or get better than Tierney. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't look like he'll be better than Tierney. Tierney is by far and away one of the best left backs in the Premier League. Uh, and so therefore, it would be crazy to think that Tavaj is going to come in and know that he's going to be taking the position away from Tierney. He knows he's going to be a backup. He's been playing backup anyway to Grimaldo at, uh, at Benfica. So he's he knows he's going to be backup at Arsenal anyway, which is fine. That's what Arsenal wanted. They wanted a player that knew their role, knew what they were going to be, and they were going to get a few games here and there. And they know that Tierney does suffer from the odd injury mainly being from being overplayed. So we won't have to deal with that. But now we've got Tavaj coming in and, and hopefully he can be a very decent signing for us on that left-hand side. I have my reservations. We've done a tactical breakdown on him. We broke him down. And when we spoke to Jose Miguel, uh, who is our Portuguese correspondent, he told us that he felt that he wasn't yet ready to even be back up to Kieran Tierney. And there's a lot of reservations about him. And there's a lot of Benfica fans that are ironically absolutely fine with him leaving so he's going to have to prove a lot of doubters including myself wrong which is great i mean it gives him that kind of extra purpose go out onto the field and go prove people wrong why not it's a good thing to have that uh nick says uh, i hate being negative but it's years of being disappointed by arsenal's transfers dealing that make me cynical i of course i hope Tavaj, uh, Tavaj, sorry does well and we keep him and we can improve on him i think that is the main thing that we're going to hope for is that he can just prove people wrong so he says considering leicester are about to sign bertram for a three-year contract maybe it's good that we didn't fall for that trap i was always in favor of bertrand but a three-year deal was always a bit of a, a push and i think i said it has to be a one year with an option or a two-year deal max but a three-year deal on Bertrand's just for me is not worth uh, kind of the age and the profile, but they've got loads of young options there that are solid. You've got Castagna that can play there. You've got Luke Thomas coming through. It's, it's just an extra one for them. Really. It's not going to be someone that they're too concerned about because they've not had an issue with overpaying or committing to older players because their recruitment is so solid. So it doesn't actually affect Leicester anywhere near as much as that would have uh, affected us. Um, who scores the first goal? Partey or Tavaj? Uh, I, I think probably Partey. You'd hope. You'd fingers crossed hope Partey's going to get his first goal this season. You would think he would. Uh, Xander says he can't be as bad as Andre Santos. Happy with his backup signing and a good luck to him. I mean, I'm not sure there can be too many uh, left backs that are ever going to be as bad as Andre Santos was. But, uh, you know... Uh, the benchmark is there. Let's hope that uh, Tavash does not beat him in regards 
regards to that area or aspect of uh, of the game. Uh, Mini Boss says, if we got Barella or Pedri kind of sort of midfielder, would you still play Partey? Uh, would you still play Partey at six? No, I, I wouldn't play Partey at six. I play him at eight all day long. Uh, Alan says, uh, I want to be positive about this signing, but to hear he's defensively naive while being the number two to an injury-prone Kieran T. And he's worrying, unless we switch to a back three, we could drop some vital points. I think it's a good shout about dropping to a back three if, say, Kieran Tierney gets injured. We have then the option to play Tavaj at the, at the left wing back role. We're just going to have to wait and see as to whether or not um, he comes good and whether or not he can play that role and, and give us what we need him to be. Uh, Anna, uh, we've already done that one. Uh, Shailendra says, Hey, bro, according to you, which uh, attacking midfield signing is good for Arsenal? Awar, Madison, or another uh, which uh, centre midfielder is good for Arsenal? Basuma, Navas, uh, Neves, I assume you mean, or Locatelli. Um, well, Awar is not a 10. Uh, Madison is a 10. Um, so they're different positions. But I, I would pick Madison out of the two. And I would pick uh, Locatelli from your options that you've thrown out there. But I don't think he's realistic. So then I would go for Basuma. Uh, thanks, Tom. Hit the like button. Indeed, very much so. Javier says, we have found a cover left back uh, for Tierney. Cheers, everyone. We needed this. Uh, Arjit says, Tavaj seems better suited to left wing back and a back three as he's better offensively. Hope he develops that defensive part of his game. Uh, Omar says, comments from Benfica fans don't fill me with confidence, but I hope he proves me wrong. And that's all we can hope for at the end of the day, isn't it, Omar? We can only hope that the negative comments that we've heard, that we've heard on this channel, that you've heard from experts, that we've heard from fans, are proven wrong. And that we hope that uh, Tavaj now comes in and really changes the opinion of, of me and other people that have got a lot of skepticism around him. I am very skeptical of him as a player, and I think there are a lot of things that I am concerned about. But I'm hoping that he proves us wrong. Uh, Oliver, uh, Olivier says, is a Conco our third or second choice goalkeeper? Well, with Runnison leaving, he would be second, but I imagine Arsenal are going to sign someone this summer. So he'll be coming in as our, as our third choice i imagine at the start of the campaign uh, alan says the benfica fans are absolutely thrilled that he's gone it's scary uh yeah i mean it is scary to think that there is that many uh people that are saying that they are glad to see the back of him uh, nick says junior furpa would have been a better signing in my opinion he would have been better but not miles i'm not a big fan of furpo from what he was at barcelona i think you made that big step up and he ultimately failed taking that step up from real betis i liked him at betis but he just couldn't make the step up work. And that was a big, big red flag for me. So whilst he probably would have been a better option uh, than Tavaj, it's, I mean, he costs more money, uh, would be in more wages. And, uh, you know, he's he's already had kind of his bad patch. He's now on a bit of a redemption train, whereas Tavaj is coming in very much so on, not a redemption, but kind of a... A rhetoric to prove people wrong in a way um, and not necessarily had kind of a dip in his time at Benfica just hasn't really been given the main opportunity I suppose so far uh, Jacques says which right back do you think will sign absolutely no idea Jacques because we've got to wait till Bellerin leaves until we move for one of those um, I hope it's an errands but I very much doubt that it will be uh, Tom says I would be upset if we're signing him as a starter but let him grow into this or another role and if he doesn't develop, move him on. And I think the fact that we're signing him as such kind of a young player that gives us that sell-on value, that gives us that kind of safety net, if you like, that he could get a few games at Arsenal, be quite decent, and then someone else comes in for him knowing he's not getting enough minutes and that they can give him first-team football. And we could sell him on and then just repeat the process for as long as Kieran Tierney's here. In two years' time, say Tavaj is fed up of not getting enough minutes at Arsenal, a team comes along, offers us 10 million... 12 million or whatever for his services. We've doubled the money that we paid for him. And then we go out and sign another young 18 to 21 year old left back, repeat that process. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a really smart way of doing your business. So I wouldn't be too concerned about bringing this guy in uh, anymore as a backup. I have come a, a lot more around to this idea of Tavaj. I wanted a better left back option in the same age profile with better potential and with less worries. But, you know, I, I'm coming around to the idea a lot more and trying to look at that from a more positive, optimistic standpoint. Um, <laughs> it's barely dapper. It's just a shirt and a T-shirt, Yanis, but I appreciate the compliments, son. Uh, Gavin says, heard that Kalasnatch is trying for a contract termination, Tom. Do you have any info on that? I've, again, heard absolutely nothing about termination. Would it surprise me? Absolutely not. Wouldn't surprise me at all. 
Um, we look at the way that Mustafi Ozil um, and Socrates, of course, had their contracts kind of terminated. Ozil wasn't a straight termination. It was a move to Fenerbahce in which Arsenal then paid most of his wages until the end of the contract. So I, I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, yeah, he's back at London Colney and he's training. If he's in the squad that goes to Scotland, that will be very, very interesting. That's that will be intriguing. So I look forward to seeing the squad announcement. We will do a show uh, around the preseason, and I am planning on doing uh, rural reaction shows straight after the games. Uh, they are being shown on Arsenal.com, so you can watch them. Um, so we will be doing shows, and I'm going to try to do some tactical breakdowns on some of the performances of some of the players as well, with the help of some guests. Fingers crossed. And we're going to try and do tactical breakdowns throughout the season this time. Last year we only did it for transfer targets. I am going to try and do it more so on the actual uh, performances to get specific performances analysed and broken down for you guys. I'm also looking to try and do some loan watches throughout the summer as well. So plenty of stuff that's going to be coming on the channel too. Uh, and I'm very excited to, to you know be cracking on and doing as much of it by myself with the help of some other people too. Looking forward to it. Um, I'm going to wrap things up here. I think it's a good place to finish this. There is not going to be... Uh, sorry, there is going to be... There is, definitely is going to be another show this evening. I'm going to be joined by Sophie from the Highbury Squad. I'm sure a lot of you are well aware of Sophie by now. Uh, fantastic work that she's doing over there uh, with Kev Campbell, of course. So it's going to be joining me this evening for a chat around 8 o'clock UK time to talk about a little bit more about Tavaj, talk a lot about the transfer window and where we might see things moving and going with the transfer window. So make sure you tune in at 8 o'clock tonight. It will be out there. It will be live. We'll be getting answering some of your questions, of course, too. It's been an absolute pleasure, guys, to speak to you as always. Uh, drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're new with those notifications turned on so you never miss a show. And, of course, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can join up as a member and then join our Discord server as well. See you this evening, guys. Have a fantastic day. See you soon. And as always, up the Arsenal.